guys, Tony here, and in this video, I'm gonna give a full review of the Vava Ultra Short Throw 4K laser projector, so stay tuned. Right, guys, as you can see here, I have the Vava Ultra Short Throw 4K laser projector paired with my Vivid Storm 100 inch screen, which is an ambient light rejection screen which rejects light from all angles except from the bottom. So it's a perfect match for this Ultra Short Throw projector. So in the box, you get the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw laser projector, a nice white remote control, and a power cable. The packaging is quite nice coming in a nice white box inside another cardboard box for added protection. As you can see, this projector can sit close to the screen, so you can place it on the floor if you don't have a TV stand for it and simply sit the projector on the floor in front of it. My screen is the 100 inch Vivid Storm ambient light rejection motorized floor raising screen. Although this Vava 4K projector can project up to 150 inches. And I can tell you now, this projector is really bright, so it should produce quite a good picture even at the higher sizes. Vava lists the light source at 6,000 lumens and 2,500 ANSI lumens image brightness, meaning that's the brightness that you can see when it's on the screen. This is of course affected by the actual brightness of the room and what screen you use. Mine being an ambient light rejection screen, it shows up pretty well in most light conditions and the light source is rated for an incredible 25,000 hours, so no worrying about changing globes. The chip is the ALDP3, which is renowned for being used in over 17,000 cinemas worldwide and has a contrast ratio of 1.5 million to one and can also represent up to 85% of the NTSC color gamut, which Vava claims is a 60 to 80% improvement on colors and brightness. It's also rated as HDR10, and when I go into Netflix, I do get the little Dolby Vision icon showing, which will generally only show if the device is capable of displaying it. And I must say, on some of the movies I watched, the picture and the colors are excellent. My first impressions of this projector are that it produces a really vivid image with great brightness and color. And over the last two weeks I've been reviewing this, it's been a great addition to my living room. I'm actually really sad that I have to send it back. One of the surprising things about this projector is the sound. It boasts a Harman Kardon stereo speaker system rated at 30 watts with support for Dolby and DTS. However, in a two channel system, it is limited to that stereo sound. Short of having the deep bass of a subwoofer, this projector was very usable with the built-in speakers. And until quite recently when I installed a 5.2.4 setup in my living room, I was listening to the movies through the projector speakers. That's a So that's something to consider when making a decision to purchase this over a TV, you may actually be satisfied with the sound that it makes and not need to buy a soundbar. Before I dive into some of the finer details about this projector, I'd like to make a few observations. I found that this projector really shines when watching TV shows, but lacks a little when watching sports, which is most likely due to the refresh rate, and this is easily said of pretty much any projector I have watched sport on. So you may be wondering what it's like for gaming. Whilst there is some input lag with this projector, my kids really enjoyed playing their first person shooter games. They were playing Call of Duty and having a lot of fun killing each other. And because it's on a much bigger screen than on a television, it was a lot more fun for them. My daughter later joined in the fun playing the car sim, Gran Turismo. And the feedback that I got from the kids was that it was so much more fun than playing on the television. So if you enjoy your gaming, this is also a really good option that you may want to consider over a TV, especially if you're going to have it in a home theater situation. When this projector really comes into its own is when watching a movie. On the weekend, I was watching Guardians of the Galaxy with some good friends of ours and was amazed at how immersive it felt. We're all in the living room, not my home theater. So if you're considering this projector for use in a home theater, I can certainly imagine it being even better. But it's white, I hear you say. Well, actually, Vava have listened and now they have an option for a black version at the same cost, which will suit nicely in a light controlled and darkened room. I've got links in the description below if you'd like to check out the black projector on the Vava website. So moving back to the projector itself, I really like the minimal look of this projector. 
It has minimal angles, has a nice cloth surround all the way around, which reminds me of the Apple HomePod. And the I.O. at the back gives you up to three HDMI inputs, as well as a USB input, which is useful as I put the USB trigger for my Vivid Storm projector so it can raise and lower when the projector is turned off and on, as well as some analog audio and video inputs and an Ethernet port, although it does have Wi-Fi baked right into a chip inside the projector. I did find the projector to be fairly quiet, although when idle and nothing playing, I did hear a slight noise, but nothing too concerning, and from my analysis of this projector, it has three small fans for cooling which is really appreciated. I also note that it has eye protection built in which is nice as I triggered it a few times while trying to calibrate the image. So there's an Android flavored OS which has an app store which you can download all of the apps you need however for my use case I have the Apple TV so I just use that plugged in and not bother with the built-in OS. There are some pretty cool calibration tools so I was able to use them to line the picture up to my screen and I know that some of the gripes that other reviewers have had about HDR and 4K not being available as default now seem to have been fixed through the various firmware updates. I won't delve too deeply into the specifications of the operating system. Over the last few weeks, I found that really all I needed to worry about was the Wi-Fi settings to update the firmware and the calibration function to line it up to my screen. I think when I mount my VividStorm screen to the wall that I will get an even better result with the calibration. And also there won't be any light coming through the back of the screen as I'll have it right up against the wall. So what I'll do now is give you some demos of how the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throat laser projector looks in various use cases so that you can make up your mind if this is something that you could see in your living room or your home theater. Righto guys, what did you think of the Vava Ultra Short Throat 4K laser projector? Let me know in the comment section down below. I have left links in the description if you're interested in buying one of these, so do check those out if you're interested. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Vava for sending me this projector to review. I'm actually really sad that I'm going to have to send it back now, but again, a huge thank you for sending it to me. I have enjoyed using it during the time that I've had it for the review. If you like the video, smash that like button for me and consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy content like this and you'll catch me in the next video. Bye for now.